Hello and welcome back to Lumpset of Generation Films. My name is American Ben and it is Saturday, which means it is a great day to serve His Holiness. Heretics may take weekends off, my friends, but Inquisitors don't. Sundays are for football, though, so deems the Emperor. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while, ever since I covered the Necrons back during our Strongest Alien series a few years back. Long ear Nurgle spilled forth his corona plague into real space to devour human souls. And CDC warning on the video. This video contains disputed information about the Chaos God. Anyway, yeah, Warhammer 40k is the most OP universe of all. We all know that by now. Godlike powers, weapons, and technology abound. 40k is so over the top that it has literally made all of our ranked list sci-fi videos predictable, because 40k almost always comes in first. Though I do feel like people often misunderstand the meaning of such rankings. Being number one doesn't necessarily mean that something is best or most creative in general. It just means that within the parameters of lore, it is the most superlative. The Expanse off doesn't come at the top of such lists because its universe is realistic. But I love The Expanse, and as you know, I'm bringing it up just to mention it and piss you all off. But I digress. Yeah, Warhammer is just next level overpowered. But you know what? There's a charm to that. Going too far is Warhammer's thing in a kind of comical way. The hyperbolic darkness and brutality of its universe provides for much good-spirited, cynical humor. But I'm sorry, the Necrons are just too far too far. So much so that it kind of feels like every other race in all of sci-fi just needs to pack it up and leave. Maybe for fantasy or romantic comedies. What say you, Master Chief? Now, I was okay with a lot of the OP aspects of Warhammer. I said nothing about Blackstone Fortresses, gargantuan alien-constructed space forts slash weapons that can glide through the void unheedful of the laws of physics, housed in armor more durable than the strongest battleships and capable of firing a beam of immaterium powerful enough to decimate any ship in existence. Um, actually, decimate means to kill one in ten. I was also pretty cool with orc might and magic. Orcs can survive in any environment and even thrive given their fungal makeup whether on Death Worlds, Space Hulks, Mustafar, or even post-Exterminatus Worlds. But what's worse is their collective psychic ability and their lack of self-doubt, which together combine to allow them to produce, well, anything they want. Orc technology functions on belief. As in, if orcs believe that a gun works in a certain way, then it does. Thus, their tech is infinitely powerful to them and useless to their enemies. They manifest whatever they want, and despite being morons, don't need to understand science and engineering anyway. On the contrary, it's science and engineering that needs to understand orcs. But fine. And then, even the humans are overpowered. 40k space marines are the most powerful space marines of all. They make Spartans seem like Boy Scouts. They can absorb more damage and recover from more grievous wounds than humans in almost any other universe. Of course, they suffer the most brutal deaths as well. Though the Starship Trooper situation doesn't exactly seem fun. Then finally, there's Chaos Gods and their demon servants to contend with. Literally the armies of hell who we're not even sure can be killed. But okay, at least they're mostly confined to another realm, i.e. the warp, that ethereal entity of psychic energy spread across space that allows for faster than light travel, itself another aspect of the 40k universe that is overpowered. This time in a negative way for almost everyone, save for maybe Slanesh. The point is, I was good with pretty much all of these examples. I held my tongue. But then in flew the Necrons, and now we have an alien race that on paper far overpowers every other alien race in science fiction. Necrons have almost all of the most powerful elements and weapons in the 40k universe, a universe that is already the most OP. First off, they are the most well-armored alien race. In ancient times, ancient for the galaxy that is, not for the Earth, the Necrontier allied themselves with the Catan, star gods made up of massive amounts of energy, in order to defeat the Old Ones, an ancient intelligent reptilian race. The Catan transformed the Necroteer's bodies into machines made up of Necrodermis, a living metal that is immune to nearly all damage, and when damaged can heal and regenerate. Necron bodies can even reassemble themselves after having been reduced to atoms. Simply said, Necrons are unbreakable. No, excuse me, they're not unbreakable, they're immortal. And in fact, when things aren't going well, they'll just retreat to their tomb worlds and hibernate for millions of years while they wait out trouble. Then there's the Necron fleets. Their ships are outfitted with energy weapons capable of tremendous destructive power. Their ships are also fast and maneuverable and contain some of the best stealth technology. But the biggest advantage of their ships is that they use what's known as an inertialess drive for FTL travel. Not only does this technology allow Necrons to transport themselves anywhere in the galaxy in an instant, but it also allows them to avoid traversing the warp, which most other races must enter in order to travel between distant points in space. How does this technology work? No one knows. It just does, so accept it. It gets worse, though. The stealth capabilities of their ships are great, but other races have stealth tech. But they don't have phase technology! The Necrons do. Yes, 
it's impossible to see them coming. They can simply disappear into nothingness and reappear wherever they want. This includes on the battlefield. When fighting, they can just phase out of the way or phase through enemy defenses. And yes, their weapons phase too. Their hyperphase swords don't need to cut through armor to penetrate it, they can simply phase through it. In general, Necron weapons are completely ridiculous, perhaps even unmatched. Their standard weapons like Death Rays and Doomsday Cannons can alone do catastrophic damage on the battlefield. But then there's their assortment of Gauss weapons, which are described as exotic weapons that emit green blasts of energy which break apart the atomic bonds of their targets. Again, the science behind them is unknown, and the rest of the races in the Warhammer universe have absolutely no answer for Gauss weapons. To be fair, it's hard to blame the Imperium for not coming up with an effective counter here. I mean, how does one design a weapon to counter something that defies the laws of physics? Oh, but we're not done discussing Necron weapons. They also possess a rare item crafted from their own Necrodermis bodies, known as an Aeonic Orb. Which, sorry, I have no pictures of because Necrons are not exactly the most transparent race, well, except for when they phase. This weapon contains a fragment of a star inside of it, and when on the battlefield, its containment field is lowered and the power of the star fragment is unleashed on the Necron's enemies in the form of a solar flare. There is nothing known to man that is capable of defending against this weapon. It has no equal. That is, except for what the Necrons themselves have in their own arsenal. Yes, sir, I have yet to mention that soon after turning the Necrons into immortal beings, the Catan Star Gods were then captured by the Necrons and imprisoned in devices called Tesseract Labyrinths. Within these devices, the Necrons sheathe the Catan as weapons that can be deployed on the battlefield. In other words, yes, wielding stars in war isn't enough for the Necrons. They also had to go ahead and wield gods. Gods who are capable of enormous energy blasts, mind control, time manipulation, extra dimensional transport, and so on. Catan shards are a bit like genie lamps, or I suppose maybe it's more accurate to compare them to if Christians made a bomb out of Jesus. But it gets worse, because all of these weapons that I mentioned are but squirt guns compared to the Celestial Orrery, which the Necrons also control. The Celestial Orrery is perhaps the most ridiculous cheat weapon I've ever heard of. I once again don't have any pictures of it, so we'll have to use our imaginations here, but the Orrery, located on the Necron world of Thanatos, is basically a hologram of the entire galaxy. But then again, it's not a hologram because it's more like a voodoo doll of the galaxy. As in, altering a spot on the hologram alters the location in real space that corresponds with that spot. This way, the Necrons can act as gods themselves. They can cause a star to go supernova with but a flick. They can destroy entire star systems in a moment's notice. They can also use the orrery to predict future events and alter them in real time. Now, luckily, the Arusker dynasty, the Necron dynasty that controls the orrery, has seemingly refrained from using it to advance themselves towards galactic domination as of yet. Though it's impossible to say that for sure, given that they could indeed be using it to alter events. After all, the Necrons are already the most OP race in the Warhammer universe. Nonetheless, it seems that the Arusker dynasty at least hasn't used the orrery to simply destroy all human worlds in the blink of an eye. Most people believe that the Necrons have shown restraint here, due both to a sense of responsibility over the galaxy and a fear of the destabilizing effects the Orrery could cause when activated. However, I kind of feel like the Necrons just simply know that this device is completely unfair. Like, they already have Star God bombs, and would be completely bored if they actually used the Orrery, but who knows. So as you can see, the Necrons are just ridiculous. And I feel like the 40k writers, God bless them because I love 40k lore to death, maybe shouldn't have gone this far. I mean, now how does anyone up this? They gave the Necrons almost all of the advantages. And sure, while in practice, when playing the tabletop game or in the books, the Necrons don't necessarily always win, when they lose, it doesn't really make sense given how overpowered they are. I mean, anyone can just make an alien race powerful. And the beauty of every sci-fi franchise is that each faction or race in it has its strengths and weaknesses, the lot of which are creatively devised to balance the state of the franchise's universe to some degree. But with the Necrons, I kind of feel like the 40k writers were just like, hmm, how can we make every aspect of this race as OP as possible? Now this all said, I also kind of love the Necrons. They're maybe my favorite 40k alien race. Yes, I can see your bolters rising, good inquisitors. To be honest, I mostly did this video because I want to get a conversation going about what the limits of lore creation should be, if there should be any limits. Do even the 40k writers have a responsibility to not go too over the top with their imaginings, despite the general hyperbolic nature of their universe? Are the Necrons just too much? Let me know what you think. 
Anyways, that's the video. I had to get that off my chest. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. As I just said, please comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Necrons and about what the limits of lore creation should be. Um, remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a damn thing. For now, my name is American Ben. I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.